Hey guys, Professor Doni back here, uh, another installment of solving some physics problems. So, uh, we've recently gone through Newton's laws, and we're looking at motion, and we're continuing to look at this box here resting on a table, still a 10 kilogram box, just for easy numbers and consistency. And we have a force of 100 Newtons pulling to the right. Now, up till now, we've ignored friction. Uh, we've just let this box be pulled with nothing resisting. But now that we're talking about friction, friction is a force that opposes motion or impending motion, meaning it's a, something that tries to keep it from moving and or when it's already moving, friction will try to hold it back and resist. It doesn't really help us push anything unless we're talking about traction, but that's a little different situation. So we're going to pull this box to the right or try to. We know there is friction present because I've given you some uh, coefficients for friction right here. Just getting a little different color. Uh, right here we've identified some coefficients of friction. First one being static which is before it moves and kinetic once it's moving. And what we're asked to find over here is, hey, does it move? Because it maybe it won't. And if it does, what is the acceleration in the x-direction? So. As we always do with these kind of problems, the first thing we want to do is do a free body diagram so we can uh, know what all the forces are going on here. Since it has mass, it'll have mg down. Since it's on the table, there will be an f of n. Okay? We also know horizontally, which is given, that we're pulling it to the right with 100. And since we're dealing with friction right now, uh, we'll put that just as a different color. We expect it to move to the right, or trying to, we're going to say that, hey, friction, or FR, I'll just call it, is acting opposite, because it always opposes the direction of motion. And we're expecting it to possibly move to the right, or at least we're trying to move to the right. Friction's going to hold it back. Now, before we can find out what's happening horizontally, if it moves or doesn't move, we need to find out how much friction is holding back. So, our first step, though, is to find out friction. Now, friction comes from the the fun equation, F-U-N equation, or uh, some of my students call it the F-U equation, but uh, from this equation. This is our given coefficient. F of N comes from summing the forces in the y direction. So we're going to go back on step two now and look at things in the y direction, because that's where F of N comes from. We'll call positive up. And we've done this in previous problems. What we have up is F of N. We have an mg down. There's no other forces acting. It tells us that f of n equals mg. It's basically the floor is holding up the weight of the box. 10 kilogram box, 9.8, gives us 98 newtons. That's what the box appears to weigh, uh, what it does weigh right now, what the scale would tell us. And another way of saying is how much the floor or table has to hold up. Now that we have f of n, basically what the box weighs, we're going to take that value and we can put that back into our fun equation and find out how much friction is present. So we put 0 0.8 as a coefficient for static because we're assuming it doesn't move yet times the 98 newtons and uh, off the top of my head I want to say that some around 78 newtons. Uh, I'll have to double check that. We'll put a little squiggly in here to say approximately. I know my uh, students would be yelling out the answer, but that's how much is pulling back. So if we come back here, we say we have 78 newtons now pulling to the left. Now 100 this way, 78 that way definitely means that the 100 is going to win. So it is going to move. So I'm going to go right to summing the forces equal to ma. I'm going to go right to Newton's second law because I know it's going to move. Positive to the right, that makes 100 minus 78, uh, that means it's going to move, equals ma. Now this is still static friction, so we have to actually change this over and use kinetic friction. So if I put this in here and recalculate this, because now I know it's going to move, I'm going to come up with 35, 39-ish. That becomes 100 minus 39 because it is moving. It goes into kinetic We'll find out our acceleration in the y direction, or x direction is, what's that, 61, 6.1. Now I know I really rushed this at the end, I want to finish it, but it's important to know that once it slides we go into kinetic. Alright, we'll see you in the next video.